Hello, I'm Olena Grunyuk and today I'm talking to Katalin Kauzli, the main ambassador and engager of the implementation of e-invoicing here in the C region. Hello, Katalin. Hello, Elena. I'm very glad that we are recording this first episode of our SME Banking Talks with you because you're always open for new ideas, new things and innovations. So let's, let's start it. Yeah, let's kick start. We like to be guinea pigs indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now we are in Budapest, your city and the city of Charlie India's office, uh, where you are co-founder and business development director. So tell us how everything started. Yeah, we met uh, with Peter back in 2014. <clears throat> uh, uh, he already had an online invoicing uh, solution and already has been, had been working on, uh, on, uh, together with the IT team uh, <clears throat> for several years. Uh, I was at the time a freelance consultant. Mm -hmm. He wanted to have a business evaluation and a common friend connected us. After that, uh, we started talking. I did the evaluation. After that, we started talking. He already had the idea of connecting e-invoicing and uh, banks. Our mission is to enable companies, especially SMEs worldwide, to enjoy the benefits of uh, interoperability invoicing. We have the vision of banks becoming the backbone of the invoicing uh, ecosystem as they are a backbone of the payment ecosystem as well. And then we were very lucky to uh, meet OTP uh, at the very right time because they were uh, doing such a solution in which our solution exactly fit. Uh, this project is known as OTP EBIS uh -huh. today. Yes. And then uh, when the project finished, uh, we then uh, made the research and uh, decided that we would uh, build a company around the business case. Uh -huh. uh, in 2017, we went to uh, New York to watch the Finovate fall. Uh -huh. And then we decided that we would be back on stage. So that's... <laughs> Well, how it started. Okay, okay, yes, we will talk about OTP EBs and your implementations there, but before, let me ask you, how does your teamwork looks, uh, look like? How do you divide your responsibility with your co-founder, Peter? And also, uh, who is, you know, the heart and the brain of your team? Yeah. Uh, so Peter is the IT guy, mm -hmm. uh, he is responsible for all the IT colleagues who are uh, all the colleagues indeed except for me. Mm -hmm. So he has the product vision, uh, we also have a CTO who uh, is responsible for the uh, practical implementation of, of Peter's vision. Uh, and I am myself responsible for uh, all marketing and business development activities. Uh, when we uh, think about strategic issue and product development issues, we do brainstorming, always brainstorming uh, mm -hmm. together and we inspire uh, each, other. each other. Yeah. Uh, the point is that uh, all the team members are committed to what they are doing. Mm -hmm. So everyone just, uh, you know, very enthusiastic and puts the best uh, mm -hmm. what, what they are capable of. of. Uh, so that's how the team uh, work looked like. And I would say there is no single brain and there is no single mind mm -hmm. uh, in Charlie India, but it's more like an interconnected minds and brains and hearts together that make up the company. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now let's get back to your solution uh, because you implemented here in Hungary with the OTP Bank and Budapest Bank, which are yeah, the biggest ones and having probably the main part of SMEs uh, market here in the country. And your solutions that you implemented actually gives the opportunity to exchange the invoice data right between the banks, this, is this interoperable uh, ecosystem. So I have two questions here, because this is a very unique uh, uh, solution here in the region. So first, my first question is, how long did it take you to implement this in these two banks? And uh, second, 
which advantages these banks uh, now see and, and promote uh, inside the bank after they implement it? Uh, yes, uh, we implemented uh, the two projects uh, with, uh, I think, uh, two years difference, mm -hmm. starting two years difference. The OTP um, project started back in uh, 2016. Uh, first, there was a pilot project or a prototyping project, and then <clears throat> after that, uh, there was the actual project. Mm -hmm. And uh, this actual project, uh, from the start until the uh, market launch of the MVP, took, uh, I think, four or five months, basically. Mm -hmm. After that, we still supported the OTP EBS team with the additional uh, features. <clears throat> but uh, after this babysitting period, they became completely independent, mm -hmm. so they are maintaining their solution right now. We started uh, the Budapest Bank implementation in 2018. Uh, the bank there had a different approach uh, to the project than OTP did, so it was kind of a longer project. Eventually, the project uh, launch was, or the product launch, uh, the product launch was in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was kind of, I don't know, one and a half years eventually. <clears throat> and uh, about the invoice uh, data exchange, we implemented our solution uh, in both banks independently mm -hmm. of each other. And uh, our technology ensures that the banks can exchange uh, invoice data without being integrated to mm -hmm. each other. Uh, back then, uh, this was a very unique solution. In a way, it is still a very unique solution now. But um, in 2018, the Hungarian tax authority um, brought the regulation of uh, continuous transaction controls. And, uh, that also uh, ensured a uh, de facto standard, I would say, which ensures the, uh, the uh, structured data exchange between any counterparty. Mm -hmm. uh, this is already being implemented by uh, the majority of ERP software, so I would say Hungary is very uh, advanced in this respect, similar mm -hmm. to Italy. And uh, there are also uh, regulations coming uh, in, the, in Europe and also worldwide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, creating such kind of ecosystem uh, um, requires uh, engaging, in my opinion, a lot of people. Uh, and maybe you know not only even not only even banks, maybe also other governmental organizations as well, tax authorities, etc. Uh, was it difficult for you, and was it simply for you to implement in the Hungarian market because of the regulations? Uh, yes. So before the regulation the came, we approached the accounting software providers and. Uh, and uh, online invoicing service providers with our concept of uh, interoperability. And uh, generally, they were not really open to mm -hmm. it because of the integration efforts that they should have done. They didn't see the actual benefits they could have uh, from the connections. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, this completely changed when the regulation came into force because everyone had to do it, so everyone yeah was forced to do it because of the uh, regulatory compliance. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, really the situation changed. Uh, the uh, invoice data is available. It can be exchanged between the parties, but also uh, the data can be retrieved from the tax authorities mm -hmm. system. So uh, yes, when you don't have the regulatory push, it is very difficult uh, mm -hmm. to convince other players to do the work, but once uh, the regulatory push is there, it just becomes evitable that yeah. it must be done. On the other hand, uh, when someone implements our uh, technology, um, it will be very easy for them to enter into the world of interoperable e-invoicing. So it can be done in Hungary, it can be done in any country of the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Yes, and actually, you know, who will be the first grabs, grabs the market, right? Absolutely. That was a very uh, huge, uh, I would say, 
uh, experience from mm -hmm. the Hungarian market that uh, the first mover advantage is really important mm -hmm. uh, in this field too. So mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. When do you predict that other countries uh, will implement uh, invoicing uh, for their business uh, customers? How fast this will be? Because we see that you know now the regulations are coming into force. Uh, yeah, regulations are just you know uh, coming everywhere. Mm -hmm. So in the next two to three years. Uh, I think most of the countries uh, will bring regulations, also those that don't have it, so who don't have it on the map yet. Mm -hmm. But we already see that um, uh, in Europe, uh, Italy and Hungary already implemented uh, invoicing yeah. mandates in 2018, mm -hmm. uh, gradually, or to some sectors. Uh, it is coming this year in Serbia, it's coming uh, uh, in Poland uh, with a gr gradual ro rollout also from this year, uh, Slovakia this year, from Bulgaria from next year. France will uh, launch the invoicing from 2024. Belgium uh, will do it next year, so it's like really coming mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, things will happen in the next, as I said, two, uh, three, four years. And uh, because of the regulation, uh, both large and small companies need to uh, need to pick a solution. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are uh, promoting our solution for banks, because they are the players who can uh, really effectively onboard SME customers, and they can solve a solution of uh, uh, regulatory compliance and also take uh, the burden of the financial, daily financial administration tasks mm -hmm. uh, from the SME shoulders. Mm -hmm. And this will concern uh, businesses both in B2B and B2C sectors, right? Yes, so the regulation uh, regulations can differ by country, mm -hmm. but uh, the regulations are, uh, are uh, extended to all of the B2B mm -hmm. relations, yeah. and in some cases B2C relations as well. In some countries the B2C relations will be done in the form of e-reporting, okay. so not the invoice data must be uh, submitted to the tax mm -hmm. authority, for example, but a subset mm -hmm. of the invoice data or an aggregated uh, data set mm -hmm. uh, must be uh, submitted to the tax authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, let's talk about advantages and, uh, and challenges uh, when implementing invoicing. Because for me, and you know, also as SME Banking Club, being a small uh, business customer uh, uh, in Poland, I do see a lot of advantages both for the SMEs themselves and for the banks, right? So for the SMEs, of course, this is uh, automation of their daily job uh, and, uh, you know, clicking also not only, I would say, not only issuing the invoices, right, but also the receiving the invoices from the counterparty. And as you have it so that, you know, for example, I receive uh, uh, the invoice from our county party, it is automatically added to the system and I can, you know, pay it with one or two clicks. This is sort of just, just, just a fairy tale, really. And for the banks, there are a lot of advantages and probably the main one is that, you know, having the invoice data and payment data, I'm not saying that Many banks already now started implementing also, you know, online accounting as well. And so having all the data on the customer, they can finance them uh, in a really less risky and fast, you know, and automated way. So knowing all these advantages for both parties, what are the main challenges do you see when implemented with the banks? Uh, I think the very first challenge is for the bank uh, to decide that they want to get into this e-invoicing mm -hmm. space and the online invoicing space because it's a non-core offering for the bank. So At I the think, moment. yeah, it's a huge <laughs> step. Uh, but once they arrive to the point that they want to do it, I think the main challenge is rather in the uh, nitty gritty of the product that uh, they are not invoicing experts, mm -hmm. so they need uh, assistance on how to do the customer journeys mm -hmm. and how to define really the, the solution so that it's 
in the end it's a good solution. Mm -hmm. But the, by far, the most important thing is, I think, to make the decision to get yeah. into this uh, online invoicing space mm -hmm. and, uh, and just to understand that uh, from a customer perspective, this is one problem. And uh, if they package invoicing and banking together, then they can, they can really uh, provide, uh, I would say, uh, uh, blockbuster offer yeah. for the SME yeah. sector. Yeah. yeah, for sure. How big team now is required, let's say, in the bank to start and keep this project live from mm. your experience? Yeah, I think uh, depending on the scope of the project, uh, uh, the banking uh, side team uh, can be anything from uh, seven, eight people mm -hmm. to 15 to 20 people, but it really requires on the scope mm -hmm. of the of the project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have competitors here on the market? Uh, I would mm -hmm. say we don't have direct competitors, so we don't have competitors who would have the same concept and the same mm -hmm. technology solution. Uh, However, who can be treated as competitors mm -hmm. for us? Uh, one is the in-house development uh, of the mm -hmm. bank itself. Yeah. The bank might decide to do the uh, online invoicing and uh, to develop it in-house with their own team. Uh, what can also happen or what has also happened that they uh, uh, acquire a team who has yeah. already built an online invoicing solution and then they integrate it into the bank. Uh, the other strategy from the bank can be that they team up with a third party solution mm -hmm. provider and they uh, do it as a partnership mm -hmm. together. Uh, the point with this is that uh, in this case the bank doesn't really have the uh, customer facing application. Uh, it, it is on the uh, service provider mm -hmm. side so we think that uh, it's better for the bank to do it uh, in-house or to keep the application in-house mm -hmm. and really package it together yeah. into the online banking or, and the mobile banking application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are your plans for this year? Oh, we have a lot of plans. Mm -hmm. uh, as, I, as we discussed already, e-invoicing regulations are coming everywhere. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we keep up uh, uh, approaching uh, banks as our main target segment. But uh, with the all the regulations coming, uh, we decided to open source some of our uh, software assets so that mm -hmm. uh, developers and software uh, companies all over the world can join the world of interoperable invoicing. We specifically develop solutions uh, for the French market. We are members of the US uh, invoicing interoperability work group where mm -hmm. there is a pilot going on. Uh, obviously we are following closely the developments uh, uh, in Poland, Serbia, mm -hmm. so all yeah. in Central Europe, but uh, our future solution will be really unique in a way that it will be very easy for any kind of not really qualified developer to uh, get into uh, the invoicing, to get connected to the local tax authority, mm -hmm. and even to set up an invoicing solution. Mm -hmm. So we are working on that. We have a new pet project as well. Uh, we just started experimenting with blockchain invoicing oh. and how and what invoicing can mean mm -hmm. uh, in a blockchain environment. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a lot of work to do, Katarin. Good luck with it and thank you for this talk. Thank you very much.